Hi all, RT Squirrel here with our first video in a series exploring the exciting world of classical ciphers. Ever since I was a child, I have been fascinated by methods of communication via secret code. Everything from hand gestures between partners during card games, to invisible ink, to the actual act of disguising the written word. Building on those earlier interests, I studied everything from classical ciphers to the much more advanced cryptographic algorithms which today strive to keep our digital world secure. It is interesting to me to think about and explore how much of our present day cryptography has its roots all the way back in the rudimentary ciphers of our ancestors. Classical ciphers are typically grouped into two different categories, transposition ciphers and substitution ciphers. These first several videos will investigate different classes of transposition ciphers. A transposition cipher is created by rearranging the letters of the plaintext in a way that will make the ciphertext appear to be well encrypted. This is also known as permutation. To put it into more mathematical terms, a bijective function encrypts by moving the character's positions, while an inverse function decrypts by mapping them back. Bijective just means associating two sets so that every element in each group is uniquely dichotomized or paired with an element from the other group. One possible, very simple transposition cipher strategy is to reverse the order of the letters in a plaintext. So with celebrate your victories as the plaintext, you end up with this as the ciphertext. Another simple transposition cipher would be to reverse the letters of each word, but not change the ordering of those words, like this. If you then group them by, say, five characters, you further obscure the real meaning. You might liken this to an anagram. It is very similar, except that unlike anagrams, transposition ciphers have a sequence or method the sender adheres to so that a message can be easily decrypted by any receiver who is aware of the method the sender employed. Anyone not aware of the sequence or method is likely to be very confused. If you are thinking these ciphers seem pretty easy to decode, you are right. Transposition ciphers are not highly secure because they do not change the letters in the plaintext or even cover up frequencies, but they can be built upon to make more secure methods of encryption. There are many classes of transposition ciphers. One of the oldest is the Cytale cipher. It was used by ancient Greeks and relied on a cylinder with a ribbon wrapped around it. The sender would write his message on the ribbon while it was wrapped. Then when it was unwrapped, it left nothing but a jumble of letters. As long as the recipient had a cylinder of similar diameter, they could recoil the ribbon and read the secret message. Even without a stick and ribbon, the Cytel cipher can still be employed on paper or digitally by offsetting each line to create the cipher. For example, to encode the plain text, all limitations are self-imposed, we would write something like this. Once that is done, we then copy the letters diagonally as so, grouping by five to further obscure our message. Thank you for joining me on this initial dive into transposition ciphers. In our next video, we will take a look at the rail fence cipher, another transposition cipher employing a similar pattern concept as the Cytail. If you liked what you learned here and are interested in more, don't forget to like and follow below. Until next time, everyone!